2020 brought so much chaos and loss. And as a pastor, I imagine you're wondering like, how does the gospel speak to this? How do I not only receive it, uh, but how do I speak it to others, other leaders, other pastors? And when we talk about gospel fluency, we know that the gospel speaks to absolutely every situation we'll ever face. And specifically, I think it really speaks to what many of us as pastors have gone through this last year. You know, the good news of the story of God is that in the beginning, everything starts with chaos and darkness, and there really is nothing in a sense. And God brings to nothing something. He speaks into darkness light. He takes the chaos and he brings order. And then even a few chapters in, we see Adam and Eve sin and ruin everything. And there's chaos again, and there's darkness, and there's loss, and there's a lot of fear. And I, I, when I think about what we've gone through this last year, I'm no different than you. I imagine you felt what I felt, which is completely out of control, so afraid at so many levels about what was going to happen to the church, what was going to happen to how we lead, what's going to happen to pastoral ministry in general. I mean, there's just so many reasons to experience fear. And the good news about the way God made you is he made you to feel fear when you're out of control. He made you to feel fear when the situation is bigger than you can handle. He made you to feel fear when you realize you need help, you need protection, you need some kind of shelter. And the good news of the gospel is that Jesus came to speak to our fears and bring help when we're out of control bring protection when we're in danger, bring shelter when there's things coming at us that we need protection from. And so what I want to encourage you as you think about the gospel is to do this. First of all, be honest about your fear. If you're a leader, you have felt fear this last year. Now here's the deal. If you were feeling, if you were afraid, but you weren't willing to say it, experience it, go to God with it, then what you probably did, because the impairment of fear is, I've got to be in control, which led you to probably experience a lot of anxiety. That this idea that I have to be in control of the situation, I've got to get ahead of what's going on, I've got to lead our church in a way that makes sure that nothing happens that's really bad. The reality is you weren't actually in control and if you weren't willing to feel your fear, you went to a place of trying to be in control which led to a lot of anxiety. Now if that anxiety continues in isolation without you going to God with it, you will experience rage you'll start to feel so out of control, so full of anxiety, that your fear will lead you to hate, lead you to, to despise, lead you to rage out against anything that feels like a threat to your world. And I would believe, and I would bet, that most of you experienced a lot of rage this last year. We saw it all around the world. We're probably not um, ourselves innocent of it as well. And so what I wanna encourage you to do is remember that Jesus came into a place where there's danger because of sin, the evil one is coming against us, the world is falling apart, so there's real danger, there's real sense of helplessness, we can't save ourselves, God knows that, so he sends Jesus, and there's real a real need for shelter, that we need to hide in somebody who can actually overcome sin, Satan, and death, and be for us a present help, a protection, and a refuge. Jesus did that for you. He came to overcome. He came to provide protection. He came to rescue you. He came to help you. And when he went to the cross, he faced death itself, took it on, went through it, overcame it, and now we know there is no fear of death that we should have in the sense that we don't have someone who overcame it for us. So the good news is we can now feel our fear, and you have to do this, because the way God designed you is you feel what you feel so you'll know what you need, and when you know what you need, you'll go to God to get it. We can feel our fear knowing that God in Jesus has overcome the greatest enemies of Satan, sin, and death for you and I. Now here's the good news. If you and I will be honest about feeling our fear, God will then say to us, fear not. Which you see him do with Mary when she's overwhelmed. You see him do with the shepherds when the angels show up. Over and over and over again, God comes to people who are experiencing fear and he says, fear not. Now not, he's not saying this, he's not saying you shouldn't feel fear. <laughs> he's saying, and this word fear not is phobia. He's saying, do not be controlled by your fear. Go to the one who can help you. Go to the one who can protect you. Go to the one who can provide shelter for you. 
So he is saying to you and I now through the gospel that there is one who can be a present help in your time of trouble, who can provide protection from the evil that's all around us, who can be a shelter for the things that are out of your control, and that's Jesus. So when we feel our fear, he says to our fear, fear not, I am with you by my spirit. Fear not, I have overcome through my death and resurrection. Fear not, I will be for you a shelter and a present help in your time of trouble. So pastors, leaders, I want to encourage you, feel what you feel. Feel the fear. You're out of control. Not of yourself, but of everything else around you. That's real. You can't do anything about that, but you can feel it. You can go to the one who's in control of it, and then you can cry out for his help, his protection, and his refuge in the midst of a crazy, out of control world. This is good news for us, but you have to realize you need it first and then you're gonna be able to bring it to your church as well. My prayer for you pastors and leaders is that you will feel honestly before God the real feelings of fear, cry out for his help, protection, and refuge, and find in him the one who can provide now wisdom for how you move forward because Proverbs tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we fear with the Lord, God will give us wisdom and help to walk through what we're facing together.